Hey everyone, we're looking at a monitor today. This is part of uh, another investigation we're doing. So Patrick Stone has accidentally become a specialist in fire hazards, uh, having looked at the Gigabyte power supplies and the NZXT H1. Now we're back with a new fire hazard. This is the Acer, we'll get a close up of the name, XV340CK. Uh, we're going to be looking at this. There were a lot of posts on Reddit we were directed to where a couple users specifically had a video of their monitor smoking out the back. Yeah. And that's generally regarded as a bad thing. We're going to see if this brand new one we bought can do the same thing. We also purchased two monitors from users on Reddit who had explicit videoed failures. We're going to look at the two user monitors. Right see what their failures were, and we're going to see if we can reproduce the failure on a brand new monitor. We're going to see how it goes. Let's get started with the XV340CK. Before that, this video is brought to you by Squarespace. We use Squarespace for our own GN store and juggle complex, multi-piece orders all the time with it. Squarespace makes it fast for us to roll out new products with detailed pages full of galleries, videos, and descriptors. It's also useful for your own resume sites, for photographer or project portfolios, or for starting your new small business idea. There's never been a better time to try and start your new business than right now. And we can vouch that Squarespace makes it easy. Visit squarespace.com slash gamersnexus to get 10% off your first purchase with Squarespace. Okay, so we're going to start by looking at one that has been taken apart. This came to us from a viewer named Brandon. Thank you, Brandon. Indeed. Uh, Thank you. We bought this one off of Brandon, and you instantly identified the failure. Do you want to talk about what you saw? The Yeah, so the instant identification was very easy because there was um, an oozy gel type substance coming out the back of the monitor. Great. Yeah, like I, I picked it up and I was like, oh, what's but that, that is stuff on my thumb. A gel, and so we just sort of... Gelatinous cube. Yeah, so we just traced, traced, traced until we got back to this, this area of the box on this bottom side. So this box mounts to the back of this thing underneath yep. the plastic. And when we took this off, let's show the largest point of failure. So I think that yep. is what I saw. Mm -hmm. We don't know yet, correct me if I'm wrong, if this is the symptom or the cause right. of the failure. Exactly right, yeah. Got to, got to do some more root cause analysis. But uh, when, when I opened it up, it, there was just like moisture all across the side of this. Right. And so it was like it went poof, right, and just kind of popped and went that way. You know, this is this is a pretty regular power circuit, nothing too crazy, right? You got your AC input, and then it goes through an EMI transient noise filter, which is what all this is. Mm. And this is a you know pretty basic cap that that uh, should be the bolt cap for this this build. And then it uh, it hits the main transformer, and then uh, and Patrick, other Patrick, had told me. Uh, he noticed this seemed wet when yep. it was initially disassembled. Mm -hmm. What is this component? Uh, so th this is just another uh, transformer. Um, I'm I'm not sure. Like, haven't haven't gotten this far into learning the, exactly what this specific transformer is for. I'm used to seeing the common mode chokes over here, uh, and then a transformer in between the primary side and the secondary side. Right. I see the MOSFETs over here on a heat sink. So. Yep. These are most most certainly your main main switching MOSFETs. Right. Uh, and uh, I'll explain this too. So uh, as we're doing root cause analysis here and trying to reproduce the failure and look for fire, uh, a couple of things we're going to be looking for. One of them, hopefully we can answer or attempt to answer at the end of this. Is there a safety concern or is it just it's a bad product? Yeah. Is there actually a hazard to the end user? Uh, my general sort of uh, broad feeling is every time there's a fire, there's a potential safety hazard. Sure. But some of them are, are less severe than others. And right. It's just a component goes up in smoke, and then that's the end of it. Yeah. So that's one thing we're going to look at. Another thing I wanted to point out is Stone has been doing a lot of power supply reviews. We don't do monitor reviews. We don't need to do monitor reviews to an analyze this specific situation. Uh, we've done a good amount of component failure analysis at this point uh, just this year alone, <laughs> and you don't need to do monitor reviews for it. But the uh, uh, other part of us not doing monitor reviews is that we aren't going to be fully educated on what every part of a monitor does and how it all works at an intricate level, which is fine for what we're doing today. Yeah, because our our goal is answered: does it produce smoke or not? Right, and you know th this th we're not going into the monitor logic; we're just standing on the power board, which pa the power board thankfully is pretty basic. Yeah, and it's it's more similar to what you do with power supplies anyway. Exactly right. So just wanted to make everyone clear on that: we don't do monitor reviews, but. 
uh, later on are we possibly going to look at maybe is this fixable? I would love to try and fix it because <laughs> then, uh, then I don't have to worry about just is this video going to generate enough ad revenue to, to pay back the very expensive <laughs> monitors and we can hopefully actually have monitors to use at the end of it. That's and we'll do another video if we can fix it. But that would be cool. Yeah, it's going to be a question of is it just this thing that failed, or did other stuff right. die too? Was it a bad batch of capacitors? Yeah. Right, and that may be what this failure is. It might be a bad batch. It could be a bad design, which would be a much worse problem. Mm -hmm. But there are a lot of Amazon reviews on this. A lot of people have bought it. I'm assuming they don't all die. We'll see what this one does, though. Right. Yeah. So, what? What? How do you want to reproduce? I. <laughs> <laughs> I think the I think what we're going to do is uh, largely disassemble this. So I would like to be able to see the board, the power board, while we're trying to get it to fail. Mm -hmm. um, we can test it as is out of box, but uh, we're just going to get smoke coming out the side. It'll be exactly what you can already see on the on Reddit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we don't need to film that again with a. Um, so so and, and Steve and I were talking about this earlier too that. Uh, whether this is on or not, it's probably since it's failing in, in the cases that we've read about yeah. within three to five minutes. It's, we don't think it's like a heat buildup issue. It does not seem like a thermal issue. It fails too fast. Yeah, exactly so, right. Um, and and the thermal pads on this are atrocious. We'll look at that too. Let's. Uh, you have taken one of these apart. I'm going to let you do the disassembly on this. Sure. And we're just going to take it apart and probably. I'll see how it's assembled once we get in there. But I'd like to get the power board exposed with this side out to the camera. We'll give it a shot, yeah. OK, so Stone got the monitor open. Yes. We've propped it up a bit. We're going to be, I'll, I'll kind of monitor the screen from down here to make sure it's turning on. Uh, and we'll try powering it on. One thing we immediately need to point out, though, is you spotted a difference. Yes. Potentially a critical difference that might make our new one not explode. You want to talk about it? So point of failure. Um, this is the viewer's monitor, to be clear. Indeed. Possible point of failure. Right, on the new one. Very different. Uh, what I mean by very different is different manufacturer. Still 100 microfarad, 100 microfarad, 450 volt, 450 volt. So it's the same spec part. Uh, can't see on this one if it's 105 degrees C rated or not, but this one is. Which, uh, if if this is a newer batch and they're they're trying to... Remedy. Prevent it, then yeah. it, this is probably going to be 105 as well. Uh, we haven't gone through and checked every component uh, thus far, right. but uh, it looks pretty similar. Another difference that I spotted color wise is you got a yellow X cap here and a gray X cap okay, here. Okay, so it, it could just be color, but it also could be an actual component change. Mm -hmm, yeah. So, and, and to, to be completely fair, like supply shortages are a real thing, right? Yeah. And so, uh, it, it is not uncommon for a company to source right. capacitors from different companies. Not an excuse for making a product that catches on fire. So we want to be very clear about that. If it catches on fire, I don't care what problems they're having. Right. That's bad. Yep. <laughs> but uh, Stone's correct in that let's just pretend neither of these have any problems. Mm -hmm. This one didn't explode. Uh, we opened two of them up, apropos nothing, there's no fire, no anything. We're not going to look at these and go, this is weird. This is a problem because they're probably just sort of modulating their supply source based on what's available, and that's true even before the last two years. Yeah. So going back a decade, that was true. Now, uh, so. it, that being said, though, like it, if a, if a company can keep the yeah. the same parts, that they usually will. They do, and yeah. and my guess is that this is not a supply shortage issue. This is probably a uh-oh. <laughs> like, how do we <laughs> fix this before someone notices? How do we fix this before millions of people have them? Um, so I'm, I'm a little more on the side of they probably are running uh, with a change and trying to not make it die. Yeah. So Some other changes uh, some for the modification to make it work. Uh, this is where the AC input is. And so the ground point is right here. You might be able to see that little grounding logo. Yeah. Uh, and I believe what's happening is we're just taking the ground from the AC and we're allowing it to hit this case so that this little wire was going here, which then allows this to be grounded. And since this is connected right. to the back side of the display, that allows that to be grounded. So what we're doing is we're allowing the ground to stay in the electronic device by simply taking this ground wire and screwing it into the back of the display. Right. So we haven't 
electrically modified how this is behaving. Exactly. Critically. That's the idea. We want to yeah. make sure that's really clear as well. Um, we have modified for purposes of seeing the failure, obviously, where the chassis is, mm -hmm. which is not on the back. But electrically should behave the same. And um, we even went through the, 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 I guess, the effort. effort. Yeah, there you go. We went through the effort of making sure that the thermal pads, these giant cubes, I guess you might be able to see one of them from right here. You got some comments on these giant thermal pad cubes? These, these are so stupid. These thermal, <laughs> just as someone who has specialized in thermal testing uh, on the team here, you know, the point of a thermal interface is it's as thin as possible. You travel through the least medium possible to get to your actual sink. You don't want a thermal pad on a device, but you need it to make a bridge. And uh, a thermal pad that is larger than, uh, I don't know, one to two millimeters, which I would say <laughs> these are cool. Centimeters? No, no. <laughs> okay. No millimeters is preferred, but maybe they missed the memo. Uh, thermal pads this large, I question how much it actually does. They're trying to sink it into the metal plate, but it's just, I mean, yeah, it's not a well, good design. Point being, we tried to make it the same as the original right. design. Which uh, is bad, but anyway. And so we're, we're, we're trying to show what, what, what the failure might be, but at the same time keep this as close to the, the real yes. thing as, it, as it's supposed to be. Last thing we should explain, this thing is just the button control yep. board. Mm -hmm. So we've relocated that. Um, you're going to plug this in. Yep. We are we going to output to a dis, to a, or pull from a computer somewhere, or are we just going to turn it on? I think just turn it on. You don't think we need a display? Like, uh, that's a good question. Uh, that's let's a try. Good question. Let's try to turn it on. Okay. So, and if it doesn't die, then we'll plug give it, it five into, minutes. Yeah. yeah. Both the users said that it was less than five minutes. Okay. So we'll plug it in. If it doesn't die in five minutes, we'll plug it into a computer and see if it dies then. Yeah. Okay. Right on. Here we go. Okay, Which one's so the power button? The this guy had the sound on on its own. This one right here. Yep. Ready? Okay. Is it on? You got blue LED right there. So there's a blue LED on the board. I don't see a logo yet. There's our Acer there logo. Acer logo is on. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and I feel hit like the I, stopwatch. I should probably be wearing safety glasses, but I'll just squint if it explodes. So <laughs> hopefully, before the you know shrapnel flies at me. If this doesn't fail after five minutes, um, like you were saying, give it some display input. Mm -hmm. uh, both of the users that uh, were submitting uh, failed devices to us said they used DP1 okay. as the input. Yeah. So when we feed a computer into it, we'll just feed through that display port one. Which, input. by the way, uh, if you, anyone in our audience, ever reaches out to us with a device failure like this, that was awesome information yeah. that, from our viewers. Where mm -hmm. The, the two people who submitted these, they were both like, here's exactly what I did. Yep. Here's how long it took. Yep. Here's the cable, like the, the input we used. So that's awesome. It makes it really easy for us to mm -hmm. cause it. So I think at this point, we're basically just waiting. I don't know if since it's not really doing anything. Is it going to actually like, pull yeah, enough power? Yeah. Because it it's basically into a, going to idle. Right. If it goes into a sleep state, maybe nothing will happen. Mm -hmm. So we're over five minutes now. OK. Um, I'd say let's give it the display input. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, should I turn it off? I would definitely turn it off. Well, Let's turn it off and unplug so it. it doesn't, so it doesn't explode while we're trying to set up the yeah. test. So we got an Intel NUC. What we're going to do is just plug this in and plug in a mouse so we have input control. That'll be it. Very simple. All right, we're on it. We got blue light. Let's see if there's the Acer logo. Yeah. So we are at a minute and a half right now. No worries. Uh, one of the guys said um, basically plugged it in, uh, waited a, after a few seconds. Uh, I, th I think he, I think he said he had just enough time to select the right input, oh, okay. and then it started smoking. So we're not there. Um, and then the other guy was like, he had three minutes, got everything up and running, ready to go, no problems. And then he walked away to do something, and then came back within five to seven minutes. Okay. And then it was smoking, and he was like, oh, gosh, turn off. Yeah, OK. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll give it a few minutes. And then the video will cut to where hopefully we're reacting to an explosion. Otherwise, I have to buy another one. Uh, there we go. Monitor still active. Did you click on explode.exe? 
I did. Oh, okay. I did, yeah. That's weird. I'll have to ask Patrick to reprogram that. <laughs> yeah, I, um... <laughs> I was just going to say, hey, hey, Patrick, I exploded that EXE. It's not working. And you're like, what? Well, yeah, the program you wrote to, to make monitors explode. Well, Acer, this is fun. Four minutes, 50 seconds. Yeah, we're at nine and a half minutes now. I think that's what we got. So I think the next thing to do then, Steve, is just to take a look at the other display and see if it also has the, uh, the same capacitor that the, of the other, uh, the currently failed display we have open. Yeah, I think so. I guess you could say we'll have to monitor the situation. Like, I can see the zoom in. <laughs> okay, so it's been a couple days now. We were waiting to get another one in. We are now on our fourth unit of the Acer monitor. Uh, it's about, I don't know, they're like four or $500 each. This is our limit. Um, I would like to have a much larger sample size. The Gigabyte Power Supplies, we did about 10, I think. Yeah. And But it's like a $100 thing. It's I could buy four for every one of these. Right. So this is our limit. Sorry, two grand is a lot to put into this. Uh, we're not going to make money on it, so i got to cut it off here. So this is our last one. Now, you opened it up, and we already have a suspicion for the result. You want to kind of... Yeah, yeah. So the first the, f the first thing we saw was it, it said November 2020. Or no, sorry. Uh, well, but yeah, I think it is right. I think it said November 2020 for, for the production date, uh, which I was like, oh, that's great. It's a different production date. It's older. Yeah, I was thinking yeah, older. Was April 21? April 2021, okay. exactly right. Yeah. And so... Uh, Immediately start taking it apart and open it up, and I'm like, oh, it's the black cat. Yeah, and it's this one uh, I actually did buy from a different retailer. So you can, I, I actually specifically bought it from Newegg instead of Amazon. Mm -hmm. because, different source, yeah. Yeah, different source. They might have different inventory sitting around, which it was November 2020, Newegg. Not a surprise. <laughs> uh, but um, yes, yeah, so we don't think this is going to go up. We're going to try it anyway, uh, and then we'll talk about what we think you should do if you happen to have one of these monitors that's either in use or in a box or whatever. Yeah. So, so let's plug it in. Let's start with the interesting part, yeah. Give let's... it the power, and I will turn on the PC at the same Back. time. Okay. Yeah. All righty. Okay. Got juice there. Hit the power button, I guess. Yeah. Did we get a little LED action there? Not yet. But it's normally a little delayed. There it goes. There you go, yeah. Wait for the Acer logo. There's so, the Acer logo. Looks good. Should be pretty. What is going on there? Is it's just, just dust. Oh, just yeah. dust. Okay. I was afraid earlier, and Keegan just took his hand and was like, scratchy, scratchy. Hey, there's, a, there's the Beast Canyon nook thing. That's kind of cool. I love that logo, man. Yeah. Uh, Logos are good. I, it's also got a QR code. Because, you know, QR code on your post like screen. Manual. It's probably like if your computer doesn't turn on, you can scan <laughs> this QR code that the computer <laughs> generates. Yeah, so we're going to, what, what time is on your watch, Steve? It is 9.12. Okay, so maybe give it like till 9.17 and see if anything happens. Yeah. Yeah, so we've definitely got the blue Windows screen. I'm going to try and. And we're not doing anything, obviously, anything technical at all here. It's, so it's all opened up. Um, none of this means anything. All we've done is take the paneling off and flip the board so you can see it. So we're not doing anything special, just turning it on, which it is now. I think Stone's going to run a video here if he can figure out how to navigate Windows upside down. Uh, and that's really going to be it. I mean, this, I, we're not expecting it to ignite. I really hope that now that I've said that, it will. That'd make a great video clip. But it probably won't because we're seeing the same. You know, it's, we only have four samples, but that's enough to develop a pattern at least. And the pattern we've seen so far is the two with a different cap from this one are both dead, and the one with this cap is not dead. So. Yeah, so this is looking pretty good. Um, About to run a video. Just a full screen video, yeah. Let's start answering some questions while this. We'll just let this run while we go through the rest of the video. Absolutely. So. Um, First question is, uh, let's address the test setup. We haven't done anything special, as I said. Uh, we have t technically modified the display, but in a way which really should have no, no, no meaning whatsoever on this particular failure. 
because the failure is isolated here on the power board. Yep. So that's not a factor. This isn't influencing the result in any way that we would be aware of, any reasonable way. Uh, to answer the question of, for people who have these, which seems like there's a lot of people who have these, I think there were a couple thousand reviews on one of the retailers. Yeah. So a lot of people have these. Uh, what do we think about anyone in the comments who's like, I have one of these on my desk. Can we use it right now to watch this video? What should I do? Yeah, so the, from everything that we've seen so far, if the display is going to fail, it's going to fail quickly. Yeah. Uh, we're talking in the first 10 minutes you own the display. So, wait, no. It's like you, you get the long. box in the door. Yeah. <laughs> in the first 10 minutes that from when you plug in the display, it's going to fail. So if you've been using this display for uh, weeks, months, years, then you're probably fine. Nothing's wrong. This particular failure may not be the one that ultimately kills your display if anything does kill it. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, at this point, we have no reason to really believe that if you've been using the display, it's a problem. Now, again, we're limited to four samples. Uh, it's enough to produce the pattern I was talking about. We don't have 100% confidence in, obviously, basically anything you say in any kind of testing or science. I mean, <laughs> anyone who has 100% confidence in it is probably overlooking something. Yeah, but we're pretty yeah. confident. Yeah. So, uh, so we're pretty confident here that if you've been using it, you're probably fine. And uh, if you haven't used it yet, you like ordered one, it's sitting in a box waiting to be opened. I mean, I don't know. Do we want to? I'm not really sure what advice I have. You could return it, I guess, before you open it. You could plug it in and monitor it actively uh, to see if it's a problem display. I, I personally don't like leaving potentially faulty components unmonitored, like walking away from them right. if they might. Ignite. And we're talking about 10 minutes. Yeah, so maybe you turn it on, you watch it for a bit, and don't leave the room. In all likelihood, probably the failure we're talking about would be the cap go, it basically explodes. Yeah, it, it, so it, it's the typical gas release out of the top, you know. Yeah. So the these electrolytic caps are, are built so that there's like a little uh, cross section at the yeah. top, and it, it's, it's specifically yeah, built for as a gas release. So if the electrolyte gets uh, overly hot, it becomes a gas. The top is built to pop open. Right. That way, you don't have any fires, no no ridiculous damage. You just get some leaking electrolytic compound, and yeah. So most, good. in all likelihood, it's probably an isolated failure that won't become a catastrophic burn down your house type of failure. However, uh, the reason I just personally never feel comfortable leaving a potentially like exploding cap. Uh, device running alone, it's just, it, you, it could always escalate. It's the what if, yeah. It's always possible to escalate. Uh, so, I guess our sort of suggestion then, soft suggestion is if you've been using it, you're probably fine. You don't really need to worry about it. Uh, and if it fails, it's probably going to be from something else. Yeah. So, that's our sort of conclusion on this one. If you haven't opened it yet, then, I mean, watch it. Like use it actively when you mm -hmm. put it to use, um, and if you're thinking about buying one, I would just buy something else. But that's just me. So yeah, and then eventually we'll we'll get some uh, replacement capacitors in to replace the uh, the brown capacitors that that were failing. Yeah. Um, this was another thing that was somewhat interesting that may have been this, this may have been a, a supply issue because when I went to go look for these hundred microfarad, four hundred fifty volt capacitors. Uh, in in this size, right? Not available. Yeah. Uh, you could get them uh, a little bit taller, a little bit shorter, um, the maybe different uh, different lifespan, so on and so forth. Or 85C instead of 105C. These are right. 105C yeah. caps. Um, but uh, there there was a shortage, so we're we're going to try and get ones that maybe are slightly different physically in terms of the shape, but um, the same properties in terms of the electronics, and then. Pop them into the ones that failed and yeah, see, see if, if that is exactly see what the problem is. Because the two I bought from viewers, they, you know, they got paid. They're just going to buy new monitors, so we own them now. So I guess we'll we might as well fix them. Like, yeah. Otherwise, they're just going to Cramden to be recycled as e-waste. Right. And then the two we have, they seem to work fine. So I guess we'll probably just keep them, put them to use somewhere. Um, that'll make me feel a little bit better. <laughs> About the expense. Sunk cost. <laughs> yeah. But thank you for watching. That's it for this one. We might do a repair video if it works out. So check back for that. Otherwise, check the channel for everything else as always. 
And you can go to store.gamersaccess.net to help us out directly, where you can get our new mouse mats in red and black. We'll see you all next time.